Are you looking to catch up on the latest Jays action? Interested in how the Jays fared against the lowly Detroit Tigers? You are in the right place. This is Station to Station, our Jays series recap show here on Organized Chaos Sports. Coming off a series win over the LA Angels, the Jays returned to Rogers Center for their home opening series versus the Detroit Tigers. Could they pull off the sweep? Stay tuned to find out more. Thank you for listening, and we hope that you enjoy. Jays home opener against the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Jays coming in with a 6-4 and four record. Tigers coming in in the, uh, the AL Central basement with a 2-7 and seven record, Dustin. Um, Give me your sense of this uh, this series and and how it went. It's uh, always good to come away with a series win, but um, you know my expectations were a sweep. I think that today's game was a little bit of disappointment, but overall, you know, two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, I think I think uh, all of you know you take a, a series win at the beginning, but definitely uh, at the time of recording. Uh, after game three, I definitely uh, feel like you left kind of a win on the table there a little bit after how the series went. Um, so let's talk about game number one. Uh, so coming home, uh, home opener, everyone's uh, jacked and uh, excited. Uh, the dome was packed. Uh, lineup changes. We have Belt uh, back in at DH. Kirk is the catcher and Biggio is at second base. Pretty much everyone else is as um, they usually are. Pitching matchup, uh, we have, uh, I guess, our ace, Alec Manoa, uh, versus Matt Manning. Manoa is coming in 1 0, 4.35 ERA and two starts, uh, 1.55 whip. And his opponent's batting average, I noted, was 250. So not uh, great, but not really uh, too bad either. Matt Manning, uh, he's a righty. 3.1 ERA. Uh, he came in one and zero in the series with a 1.41 WHIP. Uh, so the the series or the it starts off um, with Manoa not really being sharp through uh, the first few innings. Yeah, the last few games he's been uh, struggling. Maybe going through a little bit of a uh, moment here, trying to find his his mechanics or something there's something up but uh i think you know he was able to power through it he was able to come you know and deliver at least i think it was four and a third innings so um you know he showed some grit and showed some uh stamina there and uh the the boys on the bat were able to give him a win so top second uh, Manoa runs into some trouble. Uh, he's as as you touched on, really not sharp. He seemed to be really struggling with his uh, release point. And Detroit uh, gets out of that inning three nothing. And I think that was actually uh, probably the, almost the best case scenario because it seemed like it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I think he was kind of lucky to get out of the in- inning with only three runs. And even a couple other moments, you know, in the third and fourth, he was, you know, uh, coming close to a disaster outing. So the fact that he was able to go and keep it at three runs um, was a testament to his his competitiveness. Well, and he does seem to be able to do that. That does seem to be one of his strengths is uh, when he does get in a jam or, you know, uh, runners do get on. He, is, he does seem to be able to pitch his way out of that. So hopefully this is just some early season struggles and we're going to see some better outings from him uh, as the season progresses. Bottom three, uh, we have the, the Jays uh, clawing back a run. Uh, we have a – so Varsha walks, a belt single, uh, and a Kirk RBI single. Uh, so that inning ends three to one. Uh, bottom four, the Jays – claw back another run with a Matt Chapman solo home run. Seems like we're getting used to uh, 
talking about and mentioning his name. Uh, so it was a solo home run to right center. And then Belt uh, follows that up with a double, but is stranded. The game was relatively close, um, but really the bottom of the eighth inning is where uh, they really broke it open. Uh, but before uh, that happened, the bottom five uh, inning, uh, there's a Kiermaier solo home run to right field, and Springer uh, goes back to back and he uses a solo home run to left field. So that inning runs four to three. As I said, uh, bottom eight uh, really is where the Jays really broke this one open. We have a bow leadoff solo home run to right field. Um, Varsha walks and then steals a base. Chapman singles, so pushes Varsha to third. Uh, we have a belt RBI single uh, and uh, Chapman over to third. And then uh, the big swing of the game, uh, we have an Alejandro Kirk three-run home run. Uh, that inning... And in turn, the game ends nine to three. Uh, winning pitcher is Zach Poff. Losing pitcher is Matt Manning. Uh, so I would say, uh, despite Manoa's struggles, that was quite a strong start uh, to this series. Yeah, I'm sure it was quite exciting for the hometown crowd there. I think uh, one other item there is, you know, I'd like to highlight is Brendan Belt. Had a pretty good game there. I think we've been talking about his struggles early on, and it's good to see him have a, a strong uh, showing here. Yeah, he had a three-hit game. Given uh, some of the criticism that he has faced, I thought that was a nice, um, just something nice to do in front of the home crowd on the home opener to get three hits. Yeah, that's right. You know, and uh, another one is Alejandro Kirk. I think he's been struggling a little bit. He came away with a uh, uh, homer and I think had four RBIs on the day. So it's good to see some of these guys that, uh, you know, showing what they can do. Game number two, uh, coming in after all the excitement uh, from game number one, uh, line of changes, we have Chapman uh, move to the DH slot, Witt at second base, Espinal over to third uh, to cover off of Chapman, and Jansen comes in as the catcher. Uh, pitching matchup in this game was Eduardo Rodriguez, lefty versus uh, Kevin Gosman. And Gosman came in with a 1-1 one one record, a 0 ERA. Um, so he was uh, looking quite... Uh, he came into this quite quite good, and, and really, I think, um, pretty much we, what we expect from Gosman. Uh, this game, I guess a little bit considerably different than uh, the previous game, but what ended up happening was the Jays uh, stole this one, and uh, it, we had another extra innings uh, game. Yeah, they came into the ninth with, uh, you know, down two runs, Three to one, we're able to score a couple, put it to extras, and uh, we had our first walk off of the season. Yeah, and that uh, bottom of the ninth, uh, so we had a Vladdy single, a Chapman walk, uh, and I, I think uh, the way that the, the the inning started, you knew something was uh, was going. Uh, we had a Varshal got hit by a pitch, and uh, we had a wit. Uh, RBI uh, fly out and then Kirk was another uh, he was a sack fly as well uh, so really you know weren't able to win the game there but uh, were able to cash in those two runners that they did get on yeah for me I think the story of the game here is is um, Gosman's performance although you know he gave up two home runs three runs over eight he struck out 11 um, and after you know Manoa only going four the night before, having to use some of the bullpen throughout that game. I think it was a, a much needed kind of long start for somebody to, to save the bullpen here because we still have, you know, at this point, four games on the homestand. And uh, I'm sure we're going to need some of that bullpen strength come Tampa Bay. Yeah, Gosman with another quality start. Um 
the uh, extra inning, uh, the 10th, we have uh, Jansen starting uh, as the extra innings runner on second base. Kiermaier bunts him over to advance to third. And uh, uh, George Springer swings at the first pitch. Uh, and uh, it was an RBI single. And the Jays have their first walk-off um, win of the season. Yeah, it's Great to see the, the team celebrating. and They looked happy uh, to have that, uh, you know, key moment of the season, that first walk-off celebration. Fun to see. Game three. So there are a bunch of lineup changes in, in game three. We have Kirk at catcher, Biju at second base. Belt is in at first base. Vladdy is... Uh, at DH, Espinal at third, uh, Witt in left field, Varsho in center. And just uh, of note, uh, Espinal is at third base again as Chapman uh, had. Uh, he was essentially sick and wasn't able to uh, to play. Uh, so that's why we didn't see anything from him. Um, pitching matchup, we have Chris Bassett in his third start uh, versus the righty Spencer Turnbull. Uh, this uh, game, uh, you know, as we had a high score in game one, we had a walk off of game two, and I really felt the air came right out of the balloon in this one. Turnbull had a really good game, and unfortunately, even though the Jays got to him a little bit, he was, you know, similar to what the way we talked about Manoa, um, he was able to kind of put it away every inning and and stop the Jays from, you know, capitalizing on, on the few hits that they did get. And they just couldn't get any runs. So the Tigers jump out to a one nothing lead in the top of the third. And uh, right away, the uh, Jays come back with, uh, uh, we have a Cavan Biggio single in the bottom of the third, uh, who he moves over to second on a Springer strike, uh, strikeout. He, he, uh, it was it was a successful steal. He advances to third on a bow flyer and then scores on an, uh, a Vladdy RBI single. So that in the end's one to one. And I really felt at that point, you know, that, that the, you know the Jays were, um, you know, they were behind, and you know that that's when they can push forward. But unfortunately, um, top five uh, Detroit goes up two to one, and then top eight uh, three to one. And really, that's the, where the game ends. They weren't able to scratch any more runs across the board. I did want to uh, highlight uh, Chris Bassett's start. Um, so I, I'm sure uh, there will be, uh, you know, some people ripping on him. You know, he was uh, the losing pitcher in this game, so he falls to one and two. Uh, but his pitching line, six innings pitch, four hits, two earned runs, and seven strikeouts. And he improved his ERA to seven uh, sixty three. Uh, this uh, six hit, uh, six innings pitched and less than three earned runs. That's another quality start. And I, I really think that's that's all you, like really you could ask for from your starting pitcher in that uh, coming out in that uh, that third game. Yeah, I don't think Bassett was the problem here at all. And you know, I would fight anybody that that says that this game was his fault. I think he did all that you could ask for, like you said. Um, you know, I put this on just the bats not able to, you know, string hits together. You know, one funny thing that sort of occurred to me as we were watching was that, you know, the, the Jays always seem to be in it. You know, this team, you know, it, in teams past, you know, you, you get to even – two to one like this in the seventh or eighth and you're you're just like uh it's over and you turn the game off but you know i had no problem sitting there watching the game it always seemed like you know they were just on the edge of um having a big inning and and coming back like they did game two so it's encouraging it, you know these losses are going to happen you get some of these every season it's a long season and um you know, let's uh, forget about it and look forward to Tampa Bay. Well, I definitely think of the one thing that the Jays have um, 
instilled in fans is, is early on is, is hope because I think that they, um, they've shown that uh, they are able to come back, really. And, and game number two was actually their sixth come-from-behind win on the season. So um, they do, I guess they seem to start the season, is they, they do tend to fall behind and then uh, their bats will get back into the game. I, I don't think the pitching has been you know, too, too bad aside of um, – you know, a couple particular pitchers, but uh, I think overall, you know, I, I don't think the Jays are in a bad place. Let's talk about player of the series, though. I thought about this. Um, it's tough to hit. It's tough to pick um, for me. You know, the, there's so many contributors this series. Um, I'm going to give it to. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero, though, I think he had, the, you know, a decent series. I think he's on the whole, on the season hitting, or he's got a 500 on base. Um, he's really settled in and, and kind of uh, shown that he can um, adjust. He had what many considered to be a kind of a down year last year. And in this series, he's, you know, got on base quite a bit. And um, and just shown that he can he can uh, you know overcome. So I'll give it to him. Well, I definitely think Vladdy started the season quite strong, and uh, his approach at the plate and just his uh, general patience towards that bat seemed to be paying off. Uh, I don't know if the power numbers are quite there yet, but uh, you know it's a very long season where barely in the middle of, of April. So I'm sure the power numbers are going to come. Um, I think I, uh, on the broadcast, they talked about uh, he's hitting 600 against like when, when he, when a, when a fastball is put in, um, was, is thrown his way. He's hitting 600, which is totally crazy. Um, yeah. He, and I, I do think that we, we kind of under, I don't know if underestimate, but we underappreciate players when you're kind of in your own backyard and uh, what they're doing. You know, I know Matt Chapman's got a lot of praise uh, to start the season, but, uh, you know, Vladdy's a consistent performer. And I, I think at the end, uh, we'll pro- I think we're going to be looking at him in probably a, uh, an MVP um, situation. Uh, he's probably get a few votes for that by the end of it. My player of the series... Uh, as you as you touched on, I, I don't know if there was a one particular standout performer. Uh, you had Kirk with that big home run, uh, but I'm going to give it to Bo Bichette. Uh, really, uh, he's been very consistent to start the season. You know, the AL hits leader the last two years has started uh, quite well, and he uh, in this series one run, three hits, one RBI, and of course that one opposite field home run uh which he seems to his uh he seems to like the ball out of over the plate and he seems to like to take uh, balls to right field which uh, should go quite well this year given um the fence the, the the porch in right field that we now have uh at the sky dome yeah you know i love me some boba i think that you know, he, he just sprays the ball everywhere and think that, yeah, the, the new dimensions of Rogers Center are going to treat him well. You know, I saw a interview with him or a conversation that he was having, and, you know, he was saying that he's not really kind of thinking about the, the fence or the, you know, the new dimensions. He's not trying to hit it the other way, you know, because of that. But it's just that's what his his natural swing kind of, takes him to all kinds of the field and he goes with the pitch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's just off to a great start and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the conversation for AL MVP this year as well. So let's uh, look forward to both those guys, you know, leading us to victory here. Why well, I, um, well, while I was mentioning the, the Vadi, MVP contention. I, I did 
uh, I did have that on my mind that Bo's probably going to be in that conversation as well. Uh, you know, given uh, given how we started the season, I expect it to, to continue um, well. Uh, so the Jays are coming out of the series. The Jays are now eight and five, third in the AL East, and are welcoming the thirteen and O Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, My this God. is yeah, this has been one of the best starts to the the season uh, for any team. Uh, I had really wondered earlier in the week if Tampa would show up in Toronto uh, thirteen and O, and they are. Uh, they confirmed that this afternoon, and uh, why don't uh, why don't you give us a little preview of this series, Dustin? Uh, what we're going to be looking for from uh, both the Jays and the Rays? Well, you know the the Rays always play tough uh, against the Jays. Uh, I think um, you know I don't want to take anything away from them. I think they've had a. a a little bit of a soft schedule. I was looking at who they've been playing over the last um, few weeks, Boston, you know, recently. And, you know, they're just, they're, I mean, they're, they're a good team. They're executing, they're doing what they need to do against tough teams. And it's always hard to win a baseball game in the MLB. Um, you know, I think they've got some quality pitching good all around at bats. They do, you know, the, the base running things well, uh, and they've got great defense. So, you know, they're kind of like the Jays in a lot of ways. They just do everything a little bit well, and, uh, they'll, they'll be a, a definitely a tough matchup. I think if any team though, you know, that they face so far can give them their first loss, it's the Blue Jays. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, – I'm predicting a, a two-win uh, series for the Jays. I think they're going to take two or three. All right. I like your optimism. Knocking Tampa Bay off their perch uh, mm-hmm. and uh, further throwing down in the AL East because I think it's looking like uh, the AL East is going to be a real battle this year, which, you know, it always has strong teams, but – I think you have three uh, teams right now uh, that uh, all really could have hopes of winning the division. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a tight race. Um, and, you know, I think the balanced schedule that we were discussing a couple weeks ago um, is going to mean that, like, it's it's going to be favorable for all these AL teams that are, are fighting in this division, you know, it, not having to fight each other so much um, is going to probably mean that there's going to be a lot of wins in this um, division. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see it come right down to the wire. All right. I think that's all the time we have for now. Thanks for listening. This has been Station to Station here on Organized Chaos Sports. We'll be back next week to review the Jays weekend series against the mighty Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa rolls into Toronto with an incredible and unblemished 13-0 record. Can the Jays knock the Rays off their perch? Stay tuned and thank you for listening.